I would also like to thank to my colleagues in my research group. Without them, this work wouldn't have been possible at all. So let me share with you uh, what I have learned, or what we have learned in our research group about task parallel frameworks. When do you have to use them? What can you expect from them? So this is the agenda. Uh, first, let me first put the task parallel frameworks into context, and then give a brief reminder of what work stealing is all about. Then I'm going to share with you uh, three success stories in which we have put to work uh, task parallel frameworks in order to optimize pipeline codes, weight from codes, and also heterogeneous codes. Finally, conclusion. Well, this is something we don't have to stress here for this audience. We are, of course, in the multi core era. Uh, the burden or the responsibility of uh, getting the most out of our current architectures is, is in the software side, it's not in the hardware side anymore. Sequential programs are uh, slow programs. We have to parallelize the codes, and, and that's difficult because you have to think in parallel. So we, we need some, some help. We need maybe new languages, better tools to help developers these days. So in this slide, I would like to summarize some of the tools that we have available right now. For example, we have libraries for distributed memory like MPI, GasNet. For sharp memory, we have pthreads, OpenP, task frameworks. If you want to go to a higher level uh, of abstraction, you can use parallel languages that have been, for example, the big one, the biggest ones have been uh, addressed this morning, UPC, Quarite, Fortran, Titanium, or even higher, from a point of view, even better, you can go and take one of these HPCS languages, like Chapel, it was right now presented by VAS, Excel, or Fortress. Of course, also, nowadays, you cannot uh, obviate CUDA, OpenCL, and OpenACC. But I'm here today to talk about, about that framework. For example, Intel, ready to develop, CIL, Intel, CNC, the task feature of, of OpenMP uh, starting at 3.0, the Microsoft uh, task file library, also the Java concurrency library, to name a few, because we also have Nanox, we have Qthreads, we have a bunch of libraries dealing with or uh, based on, on tasks. These, all these tax frameworks have in common that the unit of execution is a task. And the good, the good thing about that is comparing with threads, tasks are a much lighter weight than threads. This, a task is typically a function or a class method, and reportedly, in PDB, for example, for free uh, uh, threading building blocks, a task can be started and terminated 18 times faster than a thread. One time, uh, 100 times faster in Windows. In our operating system, like MacOS, for the Grand Central Dispatch uh, Scheduler, one task only needs 15 instructions and one thread, hundreds of them. Another a point that I have to mention regarding tasks is that they are not a scheduler by the operating system a scheduler. We have an additional scheduler running at the user level, so the operating system does not see the task. And uh, the, the, the point is that the task scheduler mainly focus is performance. And that, that's what you really want in high performance or high performance uh, computers. So let me briefly uh, summarize what the uh, scheduler that most of the task based frameworks are based on. It's a work stealing approach in which uh, of course you are creating tasks here we have four cores and we have one thread per core. We are not oversubscribing the course, 
and we have uh, each thread executing a scheduler, a user level scheduler, which is the work stealing scheduler. So we are executing tasks uh, because we have uh, write, uh, written or code in order to generate tasks and to exploit parallelism in that way. So the, the tasks are going to create new tasks or to spawn new tasks that are going to be stored in a queue. And the other schedulers, the other threads, are eagerly looking for something to do. So they, these two threads are going to look at, look at their own local queue, and if there is no work, they are going to look for someone to still work to another core. So they are going to, for example, this worker is going to still work from, from that, from core zero, and the same for that. So now the core one is, can create more tasks, and eventually, when this worker finish with task two, look, it's going to take the, la the most recently created task because it's hotter in the cache. Okay. However, when this worker is done, it's going to steal task three because it's colder from the point of view of the cache in, ca in core one. So it's. Is cache conscious, this, this uh, scheduler, it's taking the most out of the cache. So now we have two advantages. We are automatically uh, load balancing the workload because if you don't have enough job to do, you steal job from somewhere. And this is faster than doing work sharing. I cannot go into the detail right now, but it's, it is like that. And also, we don't have the operating system scheduler restrictions, like preemption or round robin, because we, we happily sacrifice fairness for efficiency when we want to get uh, more performance. Uh, also, as I said, it's a cache conscious uh, scheduler, and you don't need to be root nor rely in real time uh, priorities to guide the scheduler, to let the scheduler do what you want to do. Also, as we uh, saw before, you don't want to oversubscribe your core. You don't want to put two or three threads per core. Because oversubscribing a core has these problems, like switching overheads, cache cooling, and lock preemption and convoy. So it's better to have only one thread per core if the thread is 100% of the time using the, 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 the core, the architecture. So now let me go ahead and explain you what we have done with task to optimize these different uh, file codes. So the story started uh, back in the days, but well, just yes, three years ago, in 2009, we were looking at the codes in the parsec benchmark and we were particularly interested in the pipeline codes. So we saw that there were three codes in the, in the parsec listed as pipeline codes, the DAP, Ferret, and X264, which is a, a, a high definition video compression. So we took first Ferret, and we saw that it was implemented using pthreads, using a pipeline a, a strategy in which each stage of the pipeline in, for the middle stages are parallel. So we can put three cores, for example, to segment, to do a image segmentation, or three cores to do, to extract some feature of the images. And so these are parallel stages. Uh, when we executed this original parsec code in our machine those days, that was the, uh, the Superdome, the Picasso machine that we have here, also is about to be shut down in a few weeks or months. Uh, we got these uh, pretty disappointing efficiencies because uh, a speed up is only around 12 for, for 110 cores and the efficiency is below 10%. <coughs> Why? Well, well, I mean, I was 
I was not the author of the, that code. This is the code that is in the benchmark. So I was looking, what's the problem here? Well, the problem is that if you put one core to do the stage two, another for three, for four, and one, one core devote to the stage five of the pipeline, we see that this is the time in blue, the dark blue, that the core is doing work. And in light blue is the core, the time that the core is idle. And what we see is that only the core uh, taking care of the stage five is doing work, and the other cores are sitting idle. Okay? If you devote two cores to each parallel stage, of course, the time to do a stage uh, five is divided by two. But now we have two cores here and here and here doing nothing. So clearly, there is no a uh, well load balance a strategy implemented in the original P-thread code. <coughs> so we also took a look at uh, the loop code, which is also a pipeline code. Also, we have different number of codes devoted to the parallel stages. The input and the output the stages are typically always serial. And what we got is also very bad speed. Of, well, this is to cry, yeah, because you see, this is less than 5% speed up for 50 cores, le around 5% efficiency, so this is really bad. And again, the, the problem was low balance. There were some stages that were overhanging a few amount of cores, and other stages that were doing quite nothing. But there were cores taking care of these stages, but doing nothing. So, there are several solutions that we applied uh, in, 90, in 2009, but the, the, the most successful one was the, uh, okay, let's do word stealing to automatically load balance the algorithm. And we decided to implement these uh, two codes using threading building blocks, and we got performance improvement of 37 and 42% for pit thread, for, sorry, for thread, and also the 63% of improvement for the DAP. Two, two reasons for that. First is automatic, uh, automatic load balance, of course, but also cache conscious uh, uh, scheduler, the cache conscious scheduler is giving us, is, was even uh, more uh, efficient. Also, the overheads uh, in which the, the three building blocks in course is uh, negligible. And you can also claim that there was more, it, it was more productive, more productive to write the code in, in TBB because you have a already built-in uh, library providing a pipeline template. So to write the code was just to declare the stages of the pipeline and to say pipeline run. So it was much more easier to, to develop the code. This together with an analytical modeling of the pipeline was published here. So there you can get much more detail. detail. So the, the, the second step was to look at the X264 that was, as you remember, was also listed in the Parsec benchmark as a pipeline code. But it turned, turned out to be a wavefront code, not a pipeline one. So the, the video compression code was as the checkerboard, Floyd Financial, or other dynamic programming uh, codes. It's a way from algorithm in which the data is laid out in a multidimensional space, and there are certain dependencies. For example, for this uh, uh, operation, we have dependencies with the north and the east pairs because the i minus y, j, i, j minus 1. So after you compute this element, you can compute, because the dependence are fulfilled, you can compute then these two, then these three uh, elements, and so this is a way from uh, template. So let me show you how this uh, way from application are usually implemented. So this is a pseudo code in which we use a matrix of counters, and each counter is telling you to how many tasks you have to wait to proceed. So this 
the task that is, is going to execute this cell has to wait to this task, to this task and that one too. So the first task that can be executed is that one because it doesn't depend on anyone. So you execute this task and then you decrement this counter and this counter so this task can be dispatched. Now, okay? Now, if you are this task, you execute the body of the task here. We have we have here the, the pseudo code. And then, let's say you look to, to your south and decrement this counter in a critical section. Okay? So you decrement this counter and you look, is zero? No. So you can you cannot dispatch this task yet. But next you decrement the counter to your east and now because it's zero, you check that the counter has reached the zero value and you can spawn a new task for this element. So this is the the pattern that is going to be a constant in all the next slides in which I'm going to implement the same task body using OpenMP, TBB, CNC, and C. But in, but in all of them, you are going to see that there is a critical section decrementing a counter, and if the counter is nullified, you are going to spawn a new task. Okay? So for example, in OpenMP, you have an open, a first version in, in which you rely on OpenMP critical to decrement the counter, and if you have to spawn a new task, use a pragma, open MP task. Okay? You can also use uh, open MP uh, logs in order to optimize this previous version. This is open MP v2. But this has a, a, an extra uh, memory consumption because you need an array of logs. In TBB, you use uh, atomic counters, so this is much more convenient. You only decrement the counter and compare in a single operation. And if the counter is zero, you spawn a new task, which is also the, this, this method. You can also, in TDD, use a parallel do feeder template, which is like a for loop in which you can add on the fly new iterations. So if the counter is nullified, you can use this feeder app, which is going to add a new iteration to the iteration space. So it's more than the same. This is the CIVIC implementation. Here we have different logs, because CIVIC doesn't have any other way to do the critical section. And CIVIC is found to do the spam. And then we have the CNC implementation. Again, we have atomic counters and this method a put is doing an spawn. All you know. So then we took all these versions and uh, uh, executed them in a quad core uh, Xeon, based on Xeon uh, processor, using three workloads: uh, fine grain uh, task, which starts doing quite nothing, only 200 blocks; medium coarse, uh, medium grain, and coarse grain. Coarse grain doing uh, 20 kilo flops per task. So what we first saw is that for coarse grain application, all the implementation were doing well. <coughs> so more or less the, the speed up was reasonable, eight in eight cores. But then for medium grain, we saw that OpenMP implementation started to fall behind, that CNC and C were so-so, and that TBB was leading the pack. But for fine grain, which is a tough problem, really, first we saw that the speed up is not very good. It's, it's less than 25% efficiency. But also that OpenMP was uh, giving a performance is, was uh, slower than the serial version with a uh, speed up lower than one. Uh, uh, CNC was also very bad. And TBB and, and, and SIP were the, the better one. 
So the, the first thing is that, okay, this is already done, this is almost done, let's solve this problem. Can we get better performance for the fine grain case? Well, it turns out to be that for TBB there is something clever that you can do. Instead of spawning a new task when you are about to die as a task, let you as a task recycle as the new one. So you, instead of spawning a new task and die, you, you yourself recycle as a, as a new task. Okay? And so this is what we did, and we reduced the number of spawn from n squared to n, the order of n squared to order of n. And also, you can do something else, which is to better exploit the cache. Why? Well, when you have these two tags ready to be spawned, what is better? To put this in the queue and spawn this one, on the, or, or the other way around, to put off this, uh, this ta task in the queue and spawn that one. Well, if you take into account the cache, since you have already executed this task, it's better to put this task in the queue and to uh, recycle as this one, because you are going to take the most out of the cache. Because in C, data are stored uh, in a row-wise uh, manner, okay? So doing that, uh, we also, we almost got 75% uh, uh, efficiency compared to the previous uh, uh, open TV, uh, implementation. We reduced the number of cache misses by four and increases the, the, the efficiency or the scalability by three. The problem is that we were happy with the pipeline template available in TBB, but there was no so si there was no anything similar for wavefronts. So we wanted to do a wavefront template to provide a wavefront template in order to simplify or to make it uh, the developing of a wavefront code. So it's now instead of writing this code, we have only to provide two files thanks to our template. One is uh, expressing the task that has to be executed for each cell, and the other one is uh, expressing the the data flow, the dependencies. So for example, for different wavefront algorithms, we have different uh, file descriptors that describe or that capture with vectors the different dependencies. So we are not only dividing by two the number of lines thanks to our template, but comparing the template implementation uh, efficiency or performance with the hand-made uh, implementation, we are almost there, almost uh, at the same level. There's less than 5% of uh, penalty that you pay by using our template, which is fine. So you are interested in more details. Here, there is a couple of papers going or diving into the details of this work. And finally, we also wanted to uh, Good task framework in order to deal with GPUs. So the idea is that when you have a thread feeding one GPU, the thread then is going to be idle till the GPU uh, get back with, with an answer. So the idea is to now oversubscribe the core with another thread that is going to to take advantage of the core, to use the core, while the thread that is feeding the GPU is doing nothing. And we can put a water ceiling scheduler here and another here, so we can automatically load balance the workload between the GPU and the cores. So we did that for pipeline, and we implemented the red using uh, GPUs and declaring one of the TBB stages to feed a GPU and also to parallelize loops. So in that case, uh, what we did, funny enough, is to implement a parallel loop rely on a pipeline template, in which the first stage of the pipeline look and see, is the GPU free? If it's free, let's generate a payload for the GPU, a, a, a bunch of iterations for the GPU. 
But if, it's, if it is not free, generate a packet of iteration for the, for the core. Okay? And then these payloads are going to reach the second stage of the pipeline and, and see, okay, this is a package for the GPU. If so, execute this number of iterations in the GPU. If not, execute these iterations in the, in the multi-core system. And the important thing is that the, the size of the package for the CPUs are computed dynamically in order to load balance the work between CPUs and GPUs. So the experimental results were done first for the file 4 with this um, M, uh, matrix vector multiplication. Uh, this is obvious, but I wanted to put it here for those that do not believe that oversubscribing is bad. Here we have eight cores, and if we put eight threads to do the computation, this is time, and you have to compare the blue lines among them and the red line among them because they are different schedulers. But if you put nine threads now, the time is bigger. And if you put 12 threads, the time to do the same computation is even bigger. So this is, this is common knowledge. Okay? Oversubscribing the threads is not a good idea if, if with one or eight threads you already have the, the, the eight CPUs uh, doing the most that they can do. Okay? They are 100% of the time doing something relevant. But if you have one GPU or two GPU or four GPUs, it's interesting to do oversubscription. So with eight cores, again, you have to compare blue lines or red lines. There are different schedulers here and Turing parameters that I'm not going to dive into them now. So if you put eight cores, you need this time. But if you put nine, then you reduce the number uh, of seconds you need. And for two GPUs, the same. And for, eight, uh, for, for four GPUs, the same. Okay, that you reduce the time to do the computation by doing by putting more threads than cores you have. The same for balance cap is an in-body simulation implemented with in eight cores. The best you can get is with eight threads. But if you have one additional GPU or two or four, it may be wise to put one additional thread or two or four. Makes sense. And uh, for pipeline, we also implemented Ferret uh, uh, having one of the stages of the pipeline sending work to the GPU, and the results were more or less there. So to conclude, uh, this is, from my point of view, the advantages of the task file frameworks. Uh, first is automatic load balancing, uh, which is obvious. An not so obvious thing is that the user can provide hints to the scheduler to take the most out of the cache to better exploit locality, as we did with the wavefront uh, algorithm. Uh, many of the uh, uh, frameworks are portable, particularly in presence of uh, templates like pipeline or parallel for templates, it's easier to implement the parallel version of the code. Task frameworks are particularly well suited for fine grained problems. And uh, with some libraries, for example, with TBB, it's on interoper interoperable with uh, many other programming languages. So just uh, Check them out. Uh, they, they, can, they can help you if you are programming in a shared memory uh, architecture. Thank you.